In any organization, the goal is to have more income than expenses. But what happens when the tithe drop, tries to go down, and you have the same amount of expenses? How can the church make sure to balance the budget and not go into debt, especially an issue in smaller church context? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna look at today. Here we go. Way back in the day, the American businessman and philanthropist John D. Rockefeller was asked, how much is enough money? He had a boatload of it. And his answer, just a little bit more. <laughs> and guess what? That's the response that you have at your church too. Yep. How much is enough? Just a little bit more because we can do a little bit more ministry if we had more money. I hear it all the time. Man, we can't do this, Dick, because we don't have enough money. And uh, certainly you don't have an unlimited supply of money. The Lord does. You don't. You have a defined decimal point of dollars and cents in your uh, account. The issue is, how well are you going to manage that money? How are you going to put together a budget? A budget's not a bad thing, by the way. A budget is something that will help you uh, moving forward take the resources the Lord's given you and be able to put them into play to uh, really do the best that you can for the ministry the Lord's given you. Yep, that's right. So today we want to talk with you about six different things that you can do to help make sure that you balance the budget. Now, when we're talking about balancing the budget, we're basically meaning uh, you have more income than you have expenses. Exactly. So as simple as that. Yeah. So uh, six ways to do this, six things you need to do to make sure. Uh, Dick, kick it off for us. You bet. First of all, I, I really want you to distinguish between a budget and a financial report. Have it happen all the time where a pastor will say to me, well, uh, you know, here's our budget. Well, he shows me income and expenses from last month. Well, okay, that's what happened last month. Right. That's a financial report. Yeah. Uh, uh, but, but what did you project? Well, this, this is our budget. Well, no. A budget is forward-looking. Yeah. A budget said this is what we plan to bring in for uh, tithes and offerings and missions. Mm -hmm. This is what we plan to spend. Mm -hmm. A financial report says this is what we did bring in. Yeah. This is what we did spend. Uh, so it will take you effort to put that together. But if you're going to re – a, a budget is planning forward. So be yeah. sure you have that distinction. Yeah. And you have to – you can't just um... – you know, I know a lot of churches that just will look at their income and expenses and they say, oh, okay, well, as long as you brought in more, we're good. Well, no, you need to have that plan. Yeah. It's going to set you up and it's going to help you be a better steward of what you have because you've, you've created a plan ahead of time. Well, in fact, is if you don't put a plan together, you're sitting there looking at a financial statement and say, well, man, we're $3,000 ahead here. We can go and spend this money, not factoring that all of a sudden you have a $10,000 expense coming at you. Yeah. But a budget will tell you that. Yeah, absolutely. So okay. number two. Okay. So with that being kind of the framework, then we want to dive into some of the practical ways you can help balance the budget and make sure that you have more income and expenses. And the, the second one today that I want to talk about is increasing income. You know, one of the things that we encourage people to do is, you know, teach on tithing, teach on generosity, Absolutely. help get people to understand how they can, um, uh, you know, learn to grow in their giving and to make sure that they become generous givers. So you need to teach on what the Bible says. What does the Bible say about giving? And make sure that you are um, just preaching that, that you're looking for ways to increase the income, and that's going to be a big way to help you. So you might not even have to change any expenses you have if you could just do a couple things to give a boost on your income. In fact, we talk about that in our Cultivating Generosity yep. video series. It's right. part of the Leaders.Church membership, and you certainly could get that if you uh, become a member or if you already are a member. Make sure to check that ep uh, episode out, that series out. Um, you can also buy that individually if you just go to leaders.church. And uh, in fact, we'll give you a 50% off. Just right. type type in the code 50 0 50-O-F-F. 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 50-O-F-F
hey, folks, the air conditioner broke down, so we need to have you give more. You're, you're not going to raise the kind of money you need to raise that way. So yeah. follow the Good. advice Jonathan Good. gave you there. Okay. Number three, decrease expenses. Now, this is always the ones, well, we can't cut expenses. Well, let me tell you, if you'll take a look, well, here's what I recommend. Take the look at the last two years' um, expenses, average them out per year. So maybe you have a line item that you spend um, you know, $3,000 on such and such in a in a given year. Well, you might want to uh, look at uh, breaking that down into some s- smaller pieces. Let's use a little larger number. Say you got $10,000 and uh, maybe you break that down into a 4,000 and a 6,000. And then you say, hey, you know what? We could slice uh, 5% off of each of those and not miss a beat. That's what you need to do. You need to go line by line in the things that where you spend money and look to chisel pieces off. Now, let me tell you what not to do. Don't go to a fixed line and chisel it just so you can say on paper we've chiseled. Your, yeah. your mortgage is probably what your mortgage right. is. <laughs> so don't uh, don't fill around with that. Even things like utilities. Now, utilities, you can save if you'll do some things with the way you're managing. Uh, but don't just all of a sudden say, well, we spent you know uh, $6,000 on utilities last year. We're going to spend 2000 this year. Yeah. Well, <laughs> no, probably not. Yeah. Probably not. So you need to be smart when you do it. Uh, go to the big ticket items. Um, when you, there are sometimes times you could take a big ticket item out, but the point is point by point by point, you chisel a little bit off here. If you've done the thing Jonathan talked about with raising income, you can begin to get to a point of balancing and having more income than expenses. Yeah, it's good. Um, then a freeze sometimes even budget items. So you know if you're on a calendar year, maybe you've put um, again this say this ten thousand dollar deal that in in place. Um, and um, it's budgeted, but you reach April and you say money is falling behind. And so you say to the players, even though it's budgeted, mm-hmm. we're not going to spend it. Yep. Um, and uh, Or we're not going to spend it now. Yeah. We're going to let things catch up. And that can be an effective way to to in, uh, decrease your expenses. Yeah, so. that's good. Okay, what's number five? Number five, ask departments and groups to pick up expenses personally. Now this gets, I know this gets... A uh, little touchy uh, because you you don't want to throw the 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 small person <laughs> under the bus here, but sometimes churches will subsidize things for um, people who are doing events. And by the way, you start with the oldest group. So if you're subsidizing children, subsidizing youth, subsidizing adults, say in their curriculum, say in uh, camps, say. Start with adults, yeah, and you just stop subsidizing adults. Adults generally would have the ability to pay, and so you say, okay, these are just maybe it's a temporary thing. Maybe for six months or for this year, you're going to stop subsidizing. Um, when you're getting to youth and children's subsidy, you you really want that to be a cutting those subsidies. You want that to be a last resort, but um, sometimes you have to do that. And but then you always want to have your antenna up. For the hardship case, you don't want anybody to be to not get ministry mm-hmm. uh, because you had to cut the budget. But their personal situation is such that if if they didn't have the subsidy, so you just have to think that all the way through. You can do it, but you've got to think about it. Yep. All right. And then the final thing, the sixth tip that we want to give you here for balancing a budget is to build cash reserves. And the, the reason you need to do this is because th- there's always a push and a pull. There's an ebb and a flow. Yep. And with income, there's an ebb and a flow. And people move away and you have a loss of income. The, then new people come and you have an increase in income. And so if you can work to build some cash reserves, that can help you bridge those gaps when you have a little bit of a dip. And so it's just like in personal um, expenses. People always recommend that you have uh, you know, six or three months, uh, you know, of reserves ready to go to cover expenses when needed. You want to do the same thing as a church. You need to have reserves built up and that's going to help you make sure that you're always balancing that budget because the goal always is to have more income and expenses. You want to never be spending more than you are more bringing in to where you're eventually going into debt. That's yeah, not good. Right. And that sets you up in a, in a, in a bad place. Exactly. So you have to make sure you have the cash reserves. So, uh, in short, let me give you a quick summary of these things here. Uh, we have d- the first thing is distinguish between a budget and a financial report, increase income, decrease expenses, free spending, even budgeted items, um, ask departments or groups to pick up expenses personally rather than the church 
subsidizing, and then finally building cash reserves. So Dick, what else? Well, if you'll do these things, you'll see your, and it's not going to happen overnight, by the way. You know, if you haven't been doing these things, Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take you some time. Mm -hmm. But if you start doing these things, I'll tell you, 90 days from now, you'll start to see things feel better. So you got to get it started. And uh, start with one piece, start with two pieces, just uh, just get started and you'll see good things happen. I will say too, um, you as the leader uh, have to lead the charge with this. You've got to help people understand because you're going to have some people that don't don't understand money, they don't understand budget. Mm -hmm. Well, pastor, why are you doing this? You know, we're just about the ministry. We're just supposed, we're not all about money. Well, listen, without, without money, you know, not much, not, you're not going to do any ministry. You don't get paid. Nobody, nothing's happening. So, and, and the Lord has provided that for us. Yeah. Part of your role as a leader is to step up and lead. And that's one of the reasons why here at Leaders.Church, we recommend that you uh, jump in personally to the five-day leadership challenge for pastors, because this is going to help you be better as a leader. Just go to leaders.church uh, forward slash um, uh, challenge, leaders.church slash challenge, and you can jump right in. This will become day one of your five-day challenge. Yeah. You get a, a, you're going to get a video sent to you every day. Uh, uh, digitally, and you'll take 15 minutes and invest in you. Yeah. Because when you invest in you, then you get better, you get stronger, the church is able to get better, get stronger, your yeah. finances get better, everything just all right. rip, ripples out of there. Yeah. Um, also, uh, be sure that you subscribe to uh, the podcast platform and YouTube. Uh, we want to have get the church tips to you every way we can, and uh, certainly spread the words to your friends, your pastor friends, because uh, church tips is designed to help you get better, break barriers, and grow your church. Anything else? That's it. We're good to go. Thanks very much for hanging with us today. Make it a great one and be blessed. Mm-hmm.